Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to be going over how to calculate a chi-squared test using Excel. And what I have here on my screen is what your workbook should look like once you are finished with your test. So with the chi-squared test, we're looking to see is there a difference from an observed value with an expected value. So in this example experiment, this is sample data that's looking to see is there the expected ratio of males and females within each grade level of the IB program. Now this is just made up data. This doesn't reflect our school. As you can tell, we don't have uh, 782 freshmen. Um, our to in total, our enrollment is probably 250 within the IB program. But just, just for um, the sake of you know, this example, we're going to go with these numbers. Okay. Now, um, I've opened up another workbook over here, and I've already started typing in some of the labels. Again, uh, you'll notice that this kind of hangs over, so I'm just going to change the column size a little bit to make that fit. Now, um, I'm going to cut and paste the data here. And I also need to type in the total as well. Total there, and we need a total up here. I'm just going to cut and paste to do that. OK. Um, so what needs to happen first is we need to have the total of all our rows and all of our columns. So in order to get a total there, I'm going to insert the formula. This is a new formula, but it's not difficult. So go up to the formulas ribbon and um, you can just go to the auto sum and all we're looking for is a sum. Okay, so equal sum and it's going to guess that I want D10 to D13, which is correct. And to make things go a little faster, I'm going to tell Excel, okay, I'm going to hover over this green dot left click, hold and drag, and I'm gonna tell Excel to copy that formula all the way over. Now notice this one says zero, and that's because it's the sum of these cells, which are empty, um, but it will fill itself in as we go and do the total for our rows. So the total here, I'm gonna go again to auto sum. Okay, and it says, oh, okay, you want a column D and column E, that is correct. And you'll notice the, the total change down here. And I'm going to uh, left click, hold, and drag to fill this in. Okay, and this is what we want. Now, the easiest way to do a chi squared table is to set up your observed values first and then cut and paste these over to under your expected values. And then uh, you don't have to type your formulas in again. Okay. Um, or your headings and whatnot, but I do need to resize this column and I actually delete that column. Okay. Now, this part is going to be wrong. All right. Um, so, what I'm going to need to do, um, actually, I, I take it back. I'm going to need to change these formulas over here. What I'm going to need to do is these totals need to match over here. Okay. So uh, how I do that is I can just hit equals and grab that column, okay? Equals and select each cell that I need. Equals, select, and enter. Equals, select, enter. Equals, select, enter. Equals, select, enter. And equals, select, and enter. Whoops. Okay, so I made a mistake. So let me undo. Okay, and I need to type the equals in over here and then select here. So you should see all of these numbers should add up. We should have 2693 total. On the expected value, there's a formula for this. And what we have to do is we have to, um, instead of inserting a formula, we actually have to program a formula ourselves. So the way to figure out your expected value when you have a two variable table like this is to take the total of the row, like if I'm doing this cell, I'm going to take the total of this row and multiply it by the total of this column and then divide the whole thing by the grand total. Okay, so how I'm going to do that, I'm going to do equals and this is just a calculator. So I'm going to select my row and I'm going to type in times and then I'm going to select the column total and then I'm going to type in divide and select the uh, grand total. 
Okay, and so this is my expected value for how many male freshmen there are. I'm gonna do the same thing again. So equals, select my row total times my column total divided by my grand total and hit enter equals row total times column total divided by grand total equals row total times column total divided by grand total. Okay, and then I just paused it while I finished filling in all of those um, cells, okay? Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to figure out the chi-square value. Um, chi-square, just like any of the other um, tests that we're doing, chi-square also will allow me to um, calculate, it, it, it's another method where you calculate um, a critical value or you calculate a value and then compare it to a critical value. Um, so in this test, you actually calculate a chi-squared value, you compare it to the critical chi-squared value, and then you figure it out from there. Is this statistically significant? Um, you will be learning how to do that in your IB math class by hand. Um, for our purposes in biology, all you're going to need to do is calculate the p-value from the chi-squared. You will need to show your working with tables like this. Um, but it's not necessary to do the, the O minus E and square that by that and, and all that stuff by hand. Okay, so you don't need to do that part. So in order to figure this out, this one's a little bit easier. So we're going to go back up to the formulas ribbon, more functions, statistical, and we're going to go down to the chi-square distribution. Um, excuse me, not the chi-square distribution, the chi-square test. You can see it starts with the distribution and it works its way down, but we want the chi-square test. So what it's going to ask you for, what is the actual range of your data that you're observed? So we only want to select these, not the totals, just the number of males and females in each grade. Then the expected range, oops, move that out of the way. We'll grab the expected range and then hit OK. And here is our result. Now we would obviously need to round that for significant figures. Um, I didn't bother to count them three. Yes, three significant figures, so I need to go up one. Okay, and it's times 10 to the negative 31st, which is a highly significant value, which would mean that um, our numbers do not reflect the, um, like these are two different data sets, like we're not actually where we need to be with enrollment. We actually have more uh, males enrolled than females. Where, were to be expected, okay? Um, and in this example, um, you could show your data visually via a bar chart. Um, in this case, this is the one time that you could um, graph your raw data um, because this is discounted. So if you wanted to grab uh, this data here, you're observed and make a bar chart, you would go up to insert over to charts and you're gonna select this one. Again, you can play around with all the settings if you'd like later, uh, but we'll need a title. We'll need access titles just like we did before in other graphs. Okay, the access titles, you would fill these in. This would be number of students over here because we were And in this case, um, our series, we would need to select that and then go up to format. And we're gonna format the uh, legend here. Nope, I take it back. We are going to, sorry, go back to select data and we're gonna edit the names of our series. So let me show you where I was. So over here, legend series, we want this not to say series one and two, we want it to say male and female. So we're gonna edit and then um, the series name, we're gonna left click, hold and drag where it says male, female. Now, it didn't do them both, okay. Let's try this again. So we're, we're gonna just do the male 
and grab the next one, series two is gonna be the female. There we go. And then over here, the these, the four axis labels, these are gonna be, we're gonna left click, hold and drag to get uh, the four grades. Okay, so now you should see, okay, the difference between males and females. We won't have any error bars on this chart um, because this is just a simple count. So there's no, there's not trials or anything like that. Um, and then of course we would need a title. So this would be, uh, I guess, gender distribution, cross read levels, okay. And if we're looking at this, it looks like we enroll in this data set, we enroll a lot of males, but we fail to keep them. They keep declining over time. Okay, but we do, a, it looks like we're doing a better job at retaining our females. Um, so if you were someone uh, analyzing demographics of this program, we would say, oh, maybe we need to have some sort of intervention um, or do some more analysis. Why are the males dropping out of this program? Is it because uh, they're more interested in sports or um, poor grades or lack of support? Like we don't know. So we would need to do further research. That's what you use to break down like that for. Okay, you could also do a pie graph on here if you wanted, um, but I like to stay away from those. Really, you only want to do a pie chart if you is if you turned these into percents. And that would take a little bit more work. This is easier, it displays the data nicely visually. That's the only graph you would need in this case, but you would need to include all these tables. Um, so if you wanted to include these tables in your Word document for your report or to put on your uh, science fair board, you'll need to select everything and you wanna include the grid lines. It's easier to put those on now than later when you're in Word. So you'll go back to the home ribbon and select right here and go down to all borders and then that will add in your grid lines. And then you can just cut and paste those, uh, these two tables and this graph. 